Welcome to the Australian Business Executive Podcast, where we speak with Australia's most influential industry professionals on the business and economic development issues taking place across the country. You can stay up to date with all our content, including our magazines, podcasts and videos by visiting www.theabe.com.au and clicking on subscribe. Today's guest is Greg Zucala, director of Zucala Homes. Zucala Homes is a boutique design and construct residential builder founded in 1957 by Vic Zucala. And today, over 60 years later, he continues the family business with his son, Greg, and his son-in-law, Joe. A registered builder, Greg's 35-year experience in the residential construction industry has included a long-standing active involvement with the Master Builders Association of Victoria, where he held the position of president between 2012 to 2014. Greg is currently the representative of Master Builders Victoria on the National Board of Master Builders Australia in Canberra. Greg is also a member of the Building Appeals Board in Victoria. That is a mouthful. Greg, thanks for uh, being with us today. <laughs> Pleasure. So, uh, Zucala Homes has been around for a number of years. Uh, could you uh, provide us the courtesy of just giving a, a little bit of background on your company, Greg? Sure. My dad, Vic, uh, started the business in 1957. He, um, uh, shortly after he finished his apprenticeship as a carpenter, he uh, strapped on his nail bag and went out and started building spec homes um, in metropolitan Melbourne. And spec homes is where um, he buys a block of land and designs a home, builds it, and then proceeds to sell it. So he did that for quite a few years and... Um, uh, eventually, our business changed whereby uh, we started to build display homes uh, in uh, Greenfields Estates around residential Melbourne and uh, did less and less of the spec building work and uh, um, started to build house and land packages for uh, for customers whereby a customer would buy a block of land or we would source one for them and we would design a home on there for them. So um, we've... we've uh, come from a purely spec builder to a design and construct builder, as we are these days. Okay. And uh, as, as a company, where do you see your difference as a builder compared to other developers in market? We like to think of ourselves as a, um, a niche builder whereby we provide uh, our customers with probably a bit more flexibility than the average builder in that um, people can choose our designs uh, and they can modify our designs, or we can design from scratch. Um, and I'm pretty confident in saying that uh, not one of our homes is exactly the same as the other, because each each of our customers puts their own stamp on it, and we're happy to uh, to allow them that flexibility. I remember when we uh, spoke a few weeks ago, when we were uh, looking at doing this piece for our next edition, you had mentioned something uh, or, or particular wording that was focused on the process and not just the product. Uh, you know, what does that mean? Um, it's important for us that um, not only our product, that is the houses we build, are designed and constructed to uh, to meet our, our customers' requirements and they have an input into that, but also the process that the customer goes through and, and by the process I mean um, the customer has the flexibility to design that home to suit their needs um, and be given the opportunity to choose um, appropriate specifications to go in that home and be aware of the appropriate specifications to go in that home. And also, um, during the construction process, well, not only just the construction, but the administration process that starts from design right through to contract and then from build right through to handover of the home, we, um, we communicate uh, regularly with the customer and uh, they have the ability or the opportunity to to call us at any time and have uh, a relationship with uh, with someone in our office and also directly with their construction manager on site. So um, there are lots of questions specifically, uh, particularly um, with people who haven't been through the build process before. And so it's important that um, we respect people's uh, requirement to... Um, uh, to ask questions uh, because some people are ignorant of the process uh, and also the people for to change their mind uh, if they wish uh, um, through the construction process and add or subtract specifications or, or building elements if they really need to. Interesting. Um, and, and so you had mentioned earlier that the company had started doing work within Metro Melbourne. Is that still the uh, 
extent of the, the company footprint? Yes, it is. We, we don't have a large um, uh, build area. We don't go to regional Melbourne, uh, regional Victoria as such, but we're restricted to metropolitan Melbourne. Um, uh, and uh, um, we don't do a big volume of homes. I guess our volume uh, in the last few years has decreased, although our turnover has probably increased. So that, that reflects the difference in um, uh, the type of home that we're designing and building now as well. Interesting. So does that mean that uh, more of your clients are, are specialising a little bit more and taking out larger blocks? Then? Um, well, they are specialising, but blocks are getting smaller and smaller. And so um, we're designing probably bigger homes on smaller lots um, or we're designing um, uh, smaller homes for, for example, empty nesters um, and uh, um, but the empty nesters are putting in um, uh, specifications and custom designs to suit to suit their needs, so that uh, even though it might be a smaller home, um, it it will have uh, a lot of upgrades, a lot of design changes, a lot of uh, specifications, and uh, to suit their particular needs. We had the opportunity to speak with you. It was probably a few years ago when we did the first Sukala piece. Um, profile in the Australian business executive. Uh, what have you been up to since then? You, you mentioned that uh, the, the work of the projects have changed a little bit. Yeah, they have certainly. Um, uh, I guess we were doing in those days a fair bit of first home buyer, um, more affordable housing. We've, uh, we've now changed to build uh, more customised, uh, to some extent larger homes, um, uh, but rather than uh, something that's, um, I guess, cheap or affordable, we're, we're designing something that's more, I guess you would say, value for money in that um, uh, people are requiring uh, a lot more of their own input um, and special appliances uh, and special features uh, in their home. Uh, and we're doing a lot more of that than we were previously. Okay. As we had mentioned in the intro, you're involved with uh, you know industry groups within your own sector and have been for a number of years. Recently, I believe that you've been appointed to a new role with the HIA Tribunal. Can you tell us what this role in, entails? It's actually um, it, it's actually a building appeals board tribunal. It's not not the HIA. Um, so so it's it's a um, um, it's a tribunal. It's um, uh, similar to VCAT. But with a, uh, a much narrow, narrower jurisdiction, it's uh, it's run by the state government, and uh, it deals with building regulations, applications for modifications to building regulations, and it deals with appeals regarding building notices that are maybe issued by councils or building surveyors um, under the Building Act. And so this um, this board is composed of uh, a number of industry professionals. Um, such as myself, who run their own businesses, and they are people like building surveyors, uh, lawyers, engineers, planners, uh, and builders. And the sort of issues that they deal with uh, would be uh, where a building regulation um, uh, may uh, may be requested to be changed by a builder or an owner to suit their circumstances, and um, the Building Act allows that to, to occur under under the direction of the Building Appeals Board where it considers that um, it's uh, it's fair and reasonable and it's not going to have a bad effect on the on the regulations. One one of the more topical things that um, come across the, the board is the current um, uh, fire cladding issue that's um, uh, that's uh, on 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 foot um, throughout the industry. Uh, more recently I guess uh, or, or less recently was um, the uh, the famous Corkman pub demolition that occurred and uh, that was appe- that was appealed and heard at the Building Appeals Tribunal as well. So those are the sort of issues, the industry issues that that, that board deals with, and that from time to time I'm asked to um, be a member of a panel. The panel consists of three or four members, uh, be it either building surveyors, lawyers, engineers, or or builders. Um, to uh, to hear those cases and that uh, those um, the board I think sits uh, weekly or bi-weekly uh, but my involvement there is probably um, uh, every two or four weeks or so depending on 
from what cases arise. And so I'm uh, up in New South Wales, and these are tend to be state-based issues. So could you just explain the fire cladding issue, and then you had mentioned a, a pub demolition as well? Hmm. Well, the fire cladding issue is is really countrywide, uh, uh, national wide, and so um, that started. Um, in Victoria a few years ago where uh, a high-rise residential tower um, went up in flames or at least the, the, the external cladding went up in flames and um, there was a big issue about whether the external cladding was uh, compliant or not and so that's uh, that's an issue that's being worked through by the state government and um, um, the technical side of that is being heard from time to time through the Building Appeals Board uh, it, it's also related to the um, huge fire that happened in London, uh, I think it was last year. Um, so that's uh, um, uh, that affects not only Victoria, but also uh, all the other states, and in particular New South Wales as well, because there, what's crept into the industry is that that product, which is not necessarily compliant in terms of its fire resistance, um, has has been used on quite a number of buildings and uh, uh, it's, it's currently being determined um, where the liability lies for that, be it with uh, the builder or the building surveyor or the fire engineer or the uh, certifier of the product. So it's a complicated issue. Um, the Corkman pub was, um, uh, was a rather infamous demolition of a uh, pub here in Melbourne which occurred... Uh, uh, over a weekend to a listed property uh, by uh, some developers um, who didn't have a permit to demolish it and um, um, the, uh, the planning minister uh, and the um, the building surveyor have issued orders on the uh, on the developers who did the demolition to um, uh, to, to rebuild it and uh, issue some fines. So the, the, those developers uh, under the Building Act have the opportunity to appeal that decision at the Building Appeals Board. So that was one of the one of the things that they that they did. Mm, okay. Um, interest rates are finally starting to creep up a bit after what seems uh, like they've been kept artificially low for a long time. As as they continue to gradually rise. What effect does this have uh, on your company as a, as a builder? Well, I, I don't think at this stage they've risen to any significant degree, but what has affected the industry, I think, is the, um, is the availability of finance or the bank's lending practices or criteria. So that's been tightening. That's had, a, that's had a, already a significant effect on the industry in terms of the amount of credit that's available out there rather than um, whether people can afford the current interest rates. I think... Uh, um, uh, they'll have interest rates probably going away to go before they become an affordability issue, but it's um, it's the uh, tightening up of the lending criteria by the banks that's uh, that will have an effect on the industry uh, and is having an effect on the industry, um, and that's probably been uh, precipitated by the um, um, by the. Uh, um, the light that's been cast on the on the banking industry at the moment to uh, tightening up what they're doing. So um, it, it doesn't necessarily it's not necessarily affecting our business so much to, a little bit I guess because uh, our customers tend to be um, not so much affordability focused um, and they a lot of them are second or third home buyers who already have equity in uh, in, in uh, existing properties. Yeah right okay. Um- your company has been recognized with a number of awards and accolades. Uh, are there any in particular that stick out in your mind that you'd be happy to discuss? Well, well in the past, we've uh, certainly um, um, won some awards at the uh, Master Builders Association, Housing Awards and, and Housing Industry Association. <clears throat> of recent times, we haven't uh, um, applied too much, so much for those. So we've been focusing more on um, our... Uh, our participation in industry bodies uh, uh, such as the Master Builders Association of Victoria and uh, also nationally uh, and also my involvement in the Building Appeals Board. So um, rather than our products doing the talking for us, um, uh, we, we're focusing on our reputation in the industry, who we are and what we do um, in terms of... Uh, uh, um, 
what we do for the industry uh, and our experience in the industry. Um, and we've let sort of our product and our um, our customers speak for themselves because a lot of our business these days comes from referrals. Mm, okay. Uh, before we wrap up today, Greg, are, are there any you know business lessons that you'd like to share, discuss, uh, you know, for our listeners in your time at the helm? Sure. Look, uh, the industry is becoming more and more competitive. Um, the bigger players, the volume builders in the market, uh, are becoming. Um, more and more flexible these days. Um, they're building different sorts of products. They have um, big marketing budgets and they're very professional in the way that uh, they portray themselves. So for smaller builders such as ourselves, it's important that uh, we, we we're able to differentiate ourselves uh, in the market and, uh, and offer customers uh, a value proposition. Uh, what we've seen as our value proposition is uh, I think you mentioned it before, is, is process as well as product, um, who we are uh, and how we do it, uh, just as equally as important as, as what we do. So we're focused on process and communication and customer service uh, rather than just product alone. So that, I think that's, that's, uh, that's an enduring um, a point of difference, I think, that we'll, that we'll see... Uh, um, the smaller builder through, and and our strengths, of course, are is our longevity in the business and and our and our experience in the business as well. Excellent, uh, Greg. Great to speak with you again. Thanks for your time today. Thank you, Jesse. This has been a production of the Australian Business Executive a division of Romulus Rising Proprietary Limited, all rights reserved. You can stay up to date with the Australian Business Executive, including our magazines, podcasts and videos by visiting www.theabe.com.au and clicking on subscribe.